The True Story, Pendle Witches The true story of the Pendle Witches is one of the most famous events in English history. Had it not been for a nine-year-old girl, the trial may never have happened. The evidence of Janet Device, a nine-year-old beggar, is what brought about the execution involving ten people, including her own family. Paranoia had been high during the 17th century and James I, who had been on the throne during this time, was a keen witch hunter and had also written a book called Demonology. Of course, this was after Guy Fawkes attempted to blow up the Houses of Parliament, which in turn caused paranoia and superstition for James I. While walking through a wood, Alison passed a peddler. She asked him for some pins, but he refused. The peddler subsequently collapsed. It is thought Alison put some sort of curse on the peddler. When questioned by Roger Nowell, Alison confessed to cursing the peddler. However, she in addition, accused their neighbors of cursing and even killing four people. It is stated there was some sort of feud involving the two families. Of course, the neighbors then accused Demdike of witchcraft. Alison, Granny Demdike, their neighbors Anne Whittle and her daughter Anne Redfine were all arrested. On Good Friday, Janet's mother hosted a party. On this day, there were rumors of a witch's gathering. The local constable investigated and arrested every person present. Others were also implicated. Everyone that had been arrested were accused of plotting to kill a man by means of witchcraft. Alice Nutter, her sister-in-law and nephew, along with her friend were among these. Children, women and liars can be witnesses over high treason against God was written by James I in his book Demonology. This is what encouraged Roger Nowell to use nine-year-old Janet as his key witness. Janet was so convincing. Her evidence was believed by the jury. In Pott's book, he recounted the way in which Elizabeth cried as soon as her daughter went into the courtroom. Janet demanded her mother be taken away climbed on the table and with ease accused her mother of being a witch. The trial lasted for two days. All of her family and almost all of her neighbors had been found guilty of causing death or harm by witchcraft. They were hanged on Gallows Hill the next day. Two decades after, ten-year-old Edmund Robinson accused Janet along with sixteen others of witchcraft. They were all found guilty. However the judges weren't confident and it had been referred to the Privy Council. Times were different and Great Britain was more skeptical, which meant that actual physical evidence was required. This prompted Edmund Robinson to crack and he admitted he lied. He had heard the stories around the Pendle Witch Trials. Janet was exonerated, but she was not permitted to leave Lancaster Castle until she paid for her board. Janet had no money so this had been impossible for her. Records regarding Janet Device only go up to 1636, so exactly what happened to her is a mystery. Gallows Hill, Williamson Park and the gloriously self-indulgent Ashton Memorial overlook the city of Lancaster. From here, the castle can be clearly seen. The park comprises over 50 acres of woodland but the focal point is the memorial a white dome which can be seen from almost everywhere in the city. This is a popular place for recreation and relaxation, even though locals are aware that it is also the site of the ancient Gallows Hill, where prisoners were brought from the castle to meet their deaths. The exact spot of execution is not marked, but it was here, with that glorious view, that the Pendle Witches were hanged on August 20, 1612. It is thought that the hanging was carried out by putting the noose around the prisoner's neck while they stood on the cart which brought them there, which would then be moved away, leaving them dangling. Anne Chattox died here, as did Anne Redfern, Jane and John Bullock, Alice Nutter, Catherine Hewitt, Isabel Roby and Elizabeth. James and Alison Device. Elizabeth Southerns would doubtless have died here also, had she not expired in the misery of her cell at Lancaster Castle. Their bodies would have been buried near this place, but as they were judged to be witches they were not given a Christian burial, nor was their resting place marked.